Hi, I'm Dr. Daniel Su, and I'm an ophthalmologist from Eye and Retina Surgeons. Today, we're going to talk about glaucoma. And just before we begin, let's find out a little bit more about the parts of the eye. In the front of the eye is the cornea, which is the transparent layer. And behind that is the iris, which gives our eye its brown color. There is an opening in the center of the iris, which is known as the pupil. And the area where the cornea and the iris meet is, forms what we call the drainage angle. And at the back of the eye is the retina and the optic nerve. This connects the eyeball to the brain. Our eye is constantly producing water from a ring of cells just behind the iris. This water is filled with oxygen and nutrients, and it brings nutrition to all the internal parts of the eye. The water flows through the pupil to the front of the eye, and it drains out through the drainage angles. So this continuous production and drainage of water helps to maintain a normal eye pressure. However, if there is obstruction in this natural drainage, it leads to a rise in eye pressure. And such a rise in eye pressure damages the nerve at the back of the eye. And that's what causes glaucoma. Glaucoma is a slowly progressive, insidious disease. This nerve damage causes gradual loss of vision and can lead to blindness. Therefore, the nickname of glaucoma is the silent thief of sight. It is the second leading cause of blindness in the world. In Singapore, 3% of our population has glaucoma. But in the age group of 70 years and above, this actually rises to 10%. Now, what causes glaucoma? Many people think that a lack of sleep or keeping late nights causes glaucoma. Or perhaps it's stress at work and having to meet so many deadlines. Or even the excessive use of computers and other electronic devices. But in truth, none of these have been proven as a cause of glaucoma. So what are the risk factors for glaucoma? It's the most important would be older age. People more than 60 years old are more prone to getting glaucoma. If you have a high eye pressure, that's certainly going to put you at risk of glaucoma. And different ethnic groups are prone to different types of glaucoma. If there is a family history of glaucoma, somebody in your family, be it a your siblings or your parents or even someone in the extended family, that puts you at greater risk too, as does taking steroid medications or having chronic diseases which are poorly controlled. If you have very high short-sightedness or very high long-sightedness, you're certainly going to be at risk of glaucoma as well. There are two main types of glaucoma. The first is known as open-angle glaucoma, and that's where the drainage angles appear open but there is some microscopic blockage to the outflow of water. Then there is closed angle glaucoma, also known as angle closure glaucoma, in which the iris obstructs the drainage angles. This form is more common in Asians and it can cause blindness more rapidly. Now, in angle closure glaucoma, there is a type in which the eye pressure rises very rapidly within a matter of hours to reach two to three times the normal pressure. And this is an emergency. It causes eye redness, blurred vision, eye pain and headache, nausea and vomiting. And very rapidly, within days, it can cause a loss of vision. And I have to caution that elderly Chinese women are most at risk. So some of you might fit into that age group. Many people believe that they should wait till they have symptoms like eye pain or redness or blurred vision before they seek medical attention. And so they think, well, we'll wait before I see a doctor. But I want to let you know that early stages of glaucoma do not cause much problems. Looking at this picture, we see things look quite normal. This whole picture looks quite clear. But if you look carefully at the right side of the picture as well as the left side of the picture, there's actually some areas of blurring. And that's how glaucoma is. There's very slow progressive damage. And so your vision appears normal.
but everything begins in the periphery and it slowly creeps towards the center. So by the time we reach a late stage of disease, a glaucoma patient would experience blurred vision, dim vision, and many of them say that their vision is rather smoky. They notice that they, they can't see things, they can't see objects in the periphery, and they find that they're tripping over objects or they're colliding with people that they're walking beside. And finally, in the end stage, there is just tunnel vision or even blindness. So how exactly is glaucoma treated? Well, the main aim of treatment in glaucoma is to reduce the eye pressure because this will protect the nerve from further damage. Glaucoma cannot be cured. The damage cannot be reversed, but treatment is effective in controlling the disease and preventing blindness. So we often start with eye drops to reduce the eye pressure. It may be necessary to use more than one eye drop. And if we find that the pressure control is poor, or the patient experiences allergies or adverse reaction to the eye drops, we may have to move on to laser or to surgery. So how do you know, or how do I know if I have glaucoma? It's not possible to know on your own, and you really do need examination with specialized equipment, which are not available at a polyclinic or most GP clinics. So I encourage you to see an eye doctor from the age of 40 years and onwards. Because early screening for, this, for glaucoma will enable early diagnosis and early treatment, which can prevent blindness. Unfortunately, late diagnosis can result in blindness. So if you have risk factors, for example, a family history of glaucoma or a high degree of short-sightedness, you're going to be at greater risk of developing glaucoma. And I urge you to come even earlier for screening. Thank you very much for joining me today in our discussion about glaucoma. I am Dr. Daniel Su from Eye and Retina Surgeons, and I look forward to talking to you again about other eye diseases. Goodbye.